Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to another session of our 15 and 15 programming. This time we are joined by Alyssa Helms um, over in Lampson Library, and she is going to talk to us about teaching with online primary sources. And with that, I will let Alyssa take it away for her 15 minutes of fame. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Uh, let me share my screen. I think I've got it. Okay, so hopefully you all can see some slides. Yep. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, teaching with online primary sources, specifically uh, how to find some online um, uh, that you can use in your teaching and um, maybe talk a little bit about the challenges about that. Um, I'll also maybe do a test drive of a couple um, different websites at the end uh, that might be maybe useful. Uh, so with stuff like this, we usually like to start with a definition. Most people know what a primary source is, even students coming in um, to my um, archives classes generally know, but um, I like the, uh, the definition that it's the raw material of history. So firsthand accounts of things um, from people who have direct connection. And they come in lots of different formats, obviously. Text is kind of the one that most people think about with primary sources, um, but images, audio, um, objects, statistics can even be primary sources, especially um, scientific data um, uh, in primary sources in the sciences. Uh, what I'll be going over today is mostly going to be um, primary sources in humanities, but uh, scientific ones are out there too. Um, so why teach with primary sources? Um, first and foremost, uh, students can get engagement and connection with primary sources, direct access to artifacts and records um, really encourages a deeper content exploration, uh, helps students connect to how people lived in the past, um, that sort of thing. Critical thinking is another reason um, when students analyze primary sources, um, it can help them um, examine meaning, context, bias, purpose, point of view, um, all good critical thinking skills to have. Um, interpretation and perspective. So students can get uh, usually multiple perspectives about an event or a topic um, and realize that history exists through interpretation that reflects you know, the points of view of the people doing the interpreting. And then the last one is active knowledge construction. So students really lead inquiry, inquiry and uh, construct their own views of events and topics through analysis of primary sources. Um, so this may sound a little bit like um, the habits of mind, um, if you're thinking of that too. Um, that's what came to mind for me. Um, but there are challenges to doing this, um, to, to incorporating primary sources into your classes. Um, one is just the lack of pedagogical training. Um, most instructors haven't really had the training to do this. Um, course design needs can become um, kind of burdensome with this, you have to be very um, careful and intensive um, and really construct the course around primary sources sometimes or um, assignments around them. Um, siloed collections, so the landscape of uh, primary sources online um, are really, I mean, it's vast and it's all over the place. Um, uh, thousands of different individual institutions have these things. So um, trying to find them can be really difficult. And then a lot of these collections, the user interface navigation is not great. Um, these individual institutions are usually not well funded. So um, they're very you, you know, lackluster in, in what they've got for user interfaces. Um, but how we address these challenges, um, you know, as a, as a researcher yourself, maybe think about how you do research um, and use the skills and connections you already have. Don't reinvent the wheel. Um, work has been done um, and things on the internet exist, um, lots and lots of them to help you with this, libguides that have links out to different resources, uh, primary source sets um, are available from lots and lots of different um, institutions, uh, lesson plan and even training um, for uh, how to include these in your courses. Um, you can also collaborate with a librarian, we would love to help. Um, and even um, help you design assignments around primary sources. And then the lastly is just practice. Um, uh, look for some stuff and, and see what you find. <laughs> um, so if you're gonna be searching for primary sources online to use in your courses, there are lots of things you should know. 
Uh, one, know where to search. So uh, primary sources, especially in the humanities, are usually housed um, in archives, libraries, museums, uh, historical society, different government offices, um, universities, federal and state level institutions have these things. Um, and uh, you may want to search um, in specific subject or format collections. So some collections are just newspaper collections, some just have images. Um, and then um, you can also search, obviously, in library databases. Um, here at Plymouth State, we have a few primary source databases or databases that um, include primary sources. Um, and then LibGuides, um, again, this is work that's already been done. Um, you can search uh, just about any topic and put in primary source LibGuide um, into Google and get, I mean, pages and pages of guides that librarians have already put together um, for some of these resources. Um, so you also wanna know what you're looking for. And this may seem kind of obvious, um, but before you start searching for these things, um, uh, and this is kind of like what, you know, we tell students in research, really define your question, define what you're looking for. So think um, who, what, where, when, what type of resources do you need? Do you need text? Do you need images? Do you need, um, you know, oral histories? Um, think about the people and organizations um, involved in whatever topic or event. Make sure you have, you know, the person's uh, name right or um, the organization name correct, you know, especially if it's changed over time, maybe, um, you know, get, get all those different um, uh, uh, names, I guess, from the organization. Um, think about time period, too. So, you know, the date ranges you may be looking for for some of these primary sources or know what the era is referred to. So, you know, the Gilded Age, um, the Victorian era, things like that, those can be really good search terms. Um, and then also know if it's a um, location-based event or topic. Um, some, you know, things that you're gonna be looking into may have a very specific locale. Um, they may be events that really, um, you know, engulf the nation or the world. Um, so thinking about that can really help. Um, so you also want to know the limitations of searching for primary sources online. Um, like I said before, online primary sources, the, the landscape is vast, divided. Um, it's, there's not much that is uh, connecting them. Um, there are a few platforms that do that, and I'll have those on the resources page or the, uh, the resources part of my handout. Um, but again, uh, interfaces and navigation can be very limiting with very few search tools. You may have to just kind of drudge through page by page. Um, sometimes there are, um, you know, digitized uh, items, and then sometimes it's not um, a digitized item, but a transcription of an item. And this is um, when it's just the text of what the, um, maybe what a legal document said. And this is um, especially um, widespread in um, documents that are not in English, but are aimed at, you know, a U.S. or English um, audience. Um, also know that not everything is going to be digitized. Um, we would really, really love to have everything digitized, but that takes uh, time, money, labor, and a lot of institutions do not have that. Um, and also don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. So you may um, have to settle for um, some primary sources that may not be exactly perfect for what you're looking at, but they would, they're would they related and they may be good enough. Um, and you may only find one or two and that's, you know, that's completely okay too. Um, so then you wanna know how to search, obviously. Um, for most digital collection interfaces, um, uh, you know, the tools are gonna be lackluster. So you kind of have to work with what you've got. Um, there may be subject terms to look for, use Boolean operators and wildcards, so use and, or, and not to connect um, keywords to get more precise results. Um, use any of the filters and options available. Most of them will have some sort of sorting um, option, or um, you, know, you can put in a date range to get um, things from certain dates. Um, and most of these digital collections will have some sort of page that has search tips, um, or even a guide on how to, to use their particular platform since they're all, they're all different. <laughs> um, so also in knowing how to search, Google can very much be your friend, um, especially Google Advanced Search. Um, if you've never used it before, or if you haven't used it in a while, um, you can put in uh, domain um, names. So if you want to 
look for some of these things, .edu or .gov are gonna be um, really good domains to search through. Um, since a lot of these collections are gonna be um, from uh, government facilities or from uh, universities. Um, you also may want to put in some catch-all words with your keywords. So, um, you know, this example, I'm looking for submarines and I put in digital archives. Um, you could put in primary sources, digital collections, online collection, and um, what your results um, should be and are gonna be some of these collections. Um, and uh, also in this uh, example I've got, I've got World War II in quotation. So if there's a title or exact phrase that you want, put that in quotation. Um, you may also want to put in um, a specific resource type. So oral history or poster newspaper, that, that kind of thing. Um, so not thank you yet. <laughs> I want to uh, show you all a couple of resources. So let me go out to the internet. Um, so I, I thought we could look at um, a couple of collections um, uh, at different levels <laughs> of location. So this is going to be um, at the national level, um, at the you know, regional state level, and then um, at the local level. Um, so here is um, the Digital Public Library of America. If you've never used this resource, it is really, really great. Um, it connects um, records from uh, you know, probably thousands of different institutions across the United States. Um, so you can uh, search uh, here in the search box for just about anything. You can browse by topic. Um, one thing to also point out is they have primary source sets. Um, so lots of institutions of, um, uh, in, in the national level have these type of things, um, and even some smaller ones do, like uh, the National Archives have primary source sets as well as the Library of Congress. Um, again, these will be um, on the resources part of my handout. But primary source sets here, um, these are just curated sets of primary sources that you can use on particular topics. And there are quite a few in the Digital Public Library of America. They've done really good work there. Um, but you can sort by subject, um, you can sort by time period. So you can be kind of broad with some of this stuff if you need to. Um, but let's search a collection. Go back out to the main page here. Um, do submarines again. I don't know why that's my search term lately, but so here, here are your results. Um, you know, like like I said, work with the tools that you've got. Um, you can sort by uh, relevance, nearest to oldest, A to Z. You've got your filters over here on the left. So if you want to just find images or just find text. Or if you want to look at submarines um, within a certain time period, you can do that or, or a certain location. So lots of uh, these interfaces have those type of um, tools and controls. So let's go to um, a different one here. So this is one at the state level. This is the Digital Library of Georgia. Um, and then this one connects uh, lots of different institutions that have digital collections from across the state of Georgia. Um, for this one, you can uh, browse as well. So you can browse by collection or institution. I'm going to put in a collection that I know they have. Southern Voice. Let's scroll down here. Here it is. Southern Voice was an LGBTQ um, newspaper from Atlanta um, back in the 80s and 90s. Um, so this is uh, basically what those records look like. So lots and lots of metadata. Um, if you wanna see the entire collection of that, here it is. And you can see that this source um, has actually a lot of different holding institutions, but it all got put together in, in this particular um, platform, which is really great. So I'll do one more. Um, let me see if I can actually get to it. There we go. <laughs> Just to put a plug in for our digital collections, um, the bottom of the library page, you can click on digital collections. Here are all of um, ours here at Lamson. We've got the Brown Company, the Museum of the White Mountains, some uh, Plymouth State related things, our campus uh, publications, yearbooks, and the historical photo collection. So just to point out a couple things of those, and that is all that I have.
All right. Stop sharing if I can. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Um, Alyssa and I were chatting earlier. Um, folks who might have questions for her, she's happy to stick around and answer those. But um, for the purpose of the recording, I will now end that.